Okay. So the question of the day is, what would Metallica have been like had Cliff Burton lived and basically not died in that tragic bus accident in which he died back in September of 1986? Where would Metallica be today? So keep in mind, September 86, that was 34 years ago. So that's actually a lot of um, history yeah, to present day to actually cover. So I'm not going to do all that in one video because um, that'll just take way too long. I'm going to um, like cover that um, by request, of course, in, yeah, I guess, yeah, sequels to this video. So um, what I'm going to cover in this video is, I guess, yeah, the first part of that is Metallica um, going to the end of the 80s into 1990 with Cliff and the band, how that would have played. So basically you're um, seeing um, the rest of the Puppets era, going through the Injustice Brawl era, and just to the point where they start working on the Black Album, but then I'll stop it at that point. Okay, so you're talking about um, May, June of 1990. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go into a little bit of depth um, there. Um, so, yeah, let's assume the bus accident still happened, but no one was actually killed. Um, at the worst, um, they suffered minor bruising injury, you had to be taken to hospital for a bit of a check out, check up, sorry, and then by the end of it, yeah, they're all right, like the very worst, yeah, shows had to be postponed um, till a later day, and meaning the tour would go on yeah, a bit longer than scheduled, maybe about a month yeah, later than scheduled, so maybe into the first half of 1987. But besides that, everything was fine. Um, they get a couple of weeks off to recover, and yeah, they're all good to go after that. Okay, so at that point um, in time, um, as I'm sure anyone would know, um, Metallica were in Sweden. They'd done their um, last show, technically speaking, their last show with Cliff in Stockholm, Sweden, um, the night before. And yeah, that was basically the Master of Puppets tour. So, um, so we're going to continue on from that point. So basically, they would have, yeah, finished the tour, um, but there would have been, there would have been a few differences. Um, keep in mind, up to that point, Metallica had performed all but three songs live from their whole disc discography at that point in time. So, um, Everything of Kill em All had been performed live. Every song except Escape from Wild Lightning had been performed live. And it was only from Master of Puppets, Leopard was Ironed or Iron that had not been performed live at that point. Um, obviously, everything I'm saying is speculation, just like anyone else would say, but. Um, so you'll never know for sure, but this is what I feel. Um, yeah, had the tour continued, um, I feel Leopard Messiah and Orion would have been performed live during the Puppets tour in their entirety. Um, the only reason they weren't performed live was basically default, like obviously no one knew that Cliff was going to die. So, um, yeah, they just didn't get around to performing those songs live. Escape, unfortunately, I can't say would have been performed live. Basically, um, the Metallica Boys did not like that song. They only wrote it because they were asked to write it um, yeah, by their record label. Just, yeah, they were asked to do a radio-friendly song, and that's what they came up with. But they never wanted to perform it live, not because they couldn't, because it would have been one of the easiest songs off theirs to perform live. Um, they just didn't want it. It wasn't what they were all about back then. You're talking about 1984, 85, yeah. 
26, they were in a different mindset back then. So, um, there would have only been one exception, I feel, or, well, one type of an exception, if that's a better way to put it, where that song would have been yeah, performed live. Um, like, it would have taken a specific event for them to perform that song live. But with that withstanding, they wouldn't have performed it live. And I feel that could be put into another video, so I won't really discuss that here. Um, but they would have performed, yeah, Leopard Mazine or, or Iron Live, yeah, at some point during the tour. I'm sure they were planning or considering do, doing it at some point. Uh, it just didn't happen by default, as I said. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, so now you notice you, um, they had a prof professional video um, like recorded of one of their shows during the Kill Mall tour, which was the one in um, Chicago. Um, and then um, they had another one recorded during the Ride the Lightning tour at the Metal Hammer Fest in 85, like well, two professionally recorded shows. And they had a few songs from the Day on the Green, yeah, in 85, but not a full show. Had the Master of Puppets tour continued, I've no doubt they would have had a couple of professionally recorded shows um, yeah, taken during that tour, and it only stands to reason. If you've got one professionally recorded show um, in the Lightning era and one in the Killer Ball era, it only stands to reason that in Master of Puppets era, they were better off even financially than what they were during those two previous era, like eras. So they would have been able to afford to have, like, a prof you know, at least have some arrangement made to have one or two of their um, shows recorded professionally. And, yeah, the shows would have been um, better, even though the Kill Em All and Rod Lightning um, shows were really good. Like, they're completely awesome. But the Master of Puppets one would have been even better because, um, for the following reasons, first of all, they had more songs to play. Um, then the sound and picture quality of um, the videos because they would have had more, yeah, been in a better financial position at least. Um, it would have been, yeah, better um, sound and picture quality. They would have had, you know, better camera angles and so forth. We would have pretty much had across, um, yeah, it would have been better than what they recorded previously, um, maybe a cross between um, the Lightning era and the Justice era. Take, for example, the Seattle show in 89. Uh, this show probably would have been pretty close to that as far as um, yeah, recording goes. Um, yeah, recording quality, you would have... Um, I noticed in the... Um, in the... Kill them all and lightning show. You don't get the best um, camera shots of the drums and all that. I feel in the puppets tour you would have gotten the best camera shots of the drums. So um, yeah, those those things would have been addressed. Um, so you could just imagine seeing yeah all your um, favorite um, puppet songs or any song of the album being performed live with professional yeah video. Um, yeah, like professionally, yeah, a professional recording of those songs live with um, Damage Incorporated and so forth would be completely awesome. Um, keep in mind, um, people might think, well, they could have done that while, you know, even when Jason was in the band, like, why couldn't he have done that then? Um, and yes, they could have done it. Um, keep in mind, they were still grieving for Cliff. Um, so that was one reason. Um, That was one reason. Um, no, so, so basically, that they weren't even in that headspace. Uh, there was, I'm sure it's something that didn't even they didn't even care about. All they were thinking about was um, yeah, their yeah, like um, their bandmate, you know, um, yeah, their like Cliff was like family to them. Yeah, this guy's gone. You know, um, it obviously left a um, lasting impact. You know. 
on them, so they're not going to be, you know, thinking about, oh, let's record a music video or let's record a live show professionally. Um, it's, they're just not in that headspace. Um, probably would have been a lot of um, pressure on them, you know, if they were asked to do that um, by management at the time. Who knows? Um, I guess an, um, another uh, reason, um, having Jason in the band, um, they'd obviously have to get him um, tight with playing with them, um, kind of breaking him in. Um, so it's like, yeah, so it's just so sure they had um, bootleg recordings, but um, they probably felt wasn't worth um, getting pro um, professionally recorded footage of that air tour. Um, so, and they might have felt maybe it's disrespectful to Cliff to do that. Um, whereas, had Cliff still been alive, they would have been in a much better place emotionally, um, psychologically, um, so forth. Um, so, yeah, that wouldn't have been an issue. You notice, yeah, they were on top of the world when, yeah, Cliff, yeah, Cliff was alive and in the band as soon as he was, yeah, taken away. They, um, yeah, they were completely messed up, you know, which is understandable, you know. Um, unfortunately, um, yeah, Jason, yeah, caught the brunt of that, but yeah, I guess it was what it was. Um, so yeah, so the puppets, um, yeah, the puppets tour would have finished. Um, there would have wouldn't have been any need to do the Garage Days um, EP, um, yeah, whatever you want to call it, because that was um, solely done to introduce um, Jason into the band. So obviously with Cliff in the band, that's not really necessary. It's not to say that none of those songs would have been um, performed at some point, but yeah, they wouldn't have needed to um, do it in that way. So, um, so the puppet uh, puppets tour ends, and I guess it's um, yeah the point they start working on Industrious Crawl. So I'm gonna pretty much um, I'm going on a similar sort of timeline to what already played out, but yeah, just um, yeah substituting um, yeah Jason for Cliff, so to speak. Um, so um, I feel it's easy, otherwise you can just go off on any tangent. So um, I think it's better to just keep the timelines fairly similar, but um, and just so we all have a point of reference, okay? So um, so yep, they would have started working the Justice album. I'm gonna go on the assumption that the or every single track on the Justice album is the same as what it actually is. So you got Blackened, Justice for Life, The Beholder, One, Shorter Straw. Pastor of Sorrow, Freight Ends of Sanity, To Live to Die, and Die's Eve. So, um, as once again, just as a point of reference. Um, so, um, now we all know that um, Jason is co credited with um, um, writing the song yeah, Blackened. He composed yeah, the main riff, or the main riff came off an idea that he had and they worked off that so um, obviously with Cliff being in the band at that point um, yeah I mean um, that signature riff that the song is well known for um, unlike it would have been unlikely that that would have come into play the song itself could have still been written um, it would have just it'll just be a lot different to the song we know so um, yeah I mean I'm sure there are other parts of the song that were composed mainly by um, James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich, so I'm sure, yeah, those parts of the song would be, um, yeah, similar, but yeah, they would, would have had a different arrangement, maybe, maybe the main riff would have been completely different. Um, now, Cliff was already contributing a lot to Metallica by that point, um, the point that he died, so it stands to reason that... Um, during the Justice sessions, he would have contributed even more. Pretty much, he would have been on par with um, James and Lars. 
So that, I'd say that's pretty much a given. They, I mean, they would have um, any idea that he had. They would have welcomed it, and you know. Um, and at that point, Metallica were dipping their hands in uh, prog. Um, I guess call it prog rock, prog metal, whatever. Um, you know. Um, as they were, you know, one of the first bands to attempt that, or at least incorporate that into their music. So, um, I feel, yeah, the album still would have gone down that yeah, path. Um, who knows, it may have even been more complex than what it actually is now, if you can even imagine that, but, you know, um, uh, may not be. Um, the songs, um... I'm sure it would have taken different arrangements, you know, in some way or another. Um, the, um, and it, the album itself is a great album, Justice for All. It's a top album. Um, it's a kick ass album, but as every person knows out there, the production is absolutely terrible. You know, they really screwed up on the mix, and that was part of the hazing process, yeah, for Jason. Um, so I guess. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we'll, um, yeah, yeah, the mentality, we'll shoot ourselves in the foot by, yeah, hazing, yeah, the new guy, you know, so probably not the best, you know, um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah pro probably not the, um, um, best sort of logic, but yeah, um, once again, yeah, can't change history, um, no doubt, um, there wouldn't have been any issues with the production or with the mixing of the album. Had Cliff been, the album would have been mixed properly. You would have had, yeah, loud thumping bass. Everything would have blended in. Um, and, yeah, um, yeah, it would have topped Master of Puppets. Um, right now, Master of Puppets is probably considered the best Metallica album. Yeah, because it was the... Um, last album with cliff it was perfectly mixed and it was it's pretty much what a heavy album yeah should be um like it had everything is like the perfect yeah fresh metal album had um yeah cliff lived in justice for all would have topped that um I guess, yeah, how it would have topped it, who knows, but yeah, definitely the production would have been, you know, um, if not as good, yeah, better, um, but yeah, the song, it would have just, they would have just naturally, yeah, everything would have progressed to the next, yeah, level, um, playing, um, I mean, the playing did, yeah, progress, at least, um, as far as drums and guitars go, um, with bass, it's a different story because you had two different bass players, but, um, yeah, so it's, um, so it's a bit of a tricky thing, yeah, to make that, um, yeah, comparison, but I guess, um, Cliff, um, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, he, he would have known, um, he was all about, um, yeah, constantly learning, constantly becoming better. He would have, um, yeah. And he had, and I guess there was also that magic that they had, that chemistry they had in the band when, yeah, it was, yeah, James last Kirk and Cliff. Um, basically everything they touched turned to gold, had the minus touch. So, um, so for that reason alone, yeah, um, everything about the album would have been better, even though it's hard to imagine not having, um, yeah, hearing the song Blackened um, without the killer um, riff that um, Jason Newstead, yeah, contributed, yeah, to the song. I mean, that that's awesome, you know, just, it's, yeah, like, yeah, that riff defines a song, but, you know, um, in an alternate universe, um, I guess, yeah, that somehow does get top. Hard to imagine that it does. Um, so, um, the album would have still been released in 88, I'm sure, but maybe a bit earlier, but, um, we'll keep it on a similar, yeah, sort of release date. Um, they would have, um, done the Damage Justice Tour of 88, 89, um, 
that was also when Metallica made their first music video, which um, it's inevitable that was going to happen anyway. So it would have played out similarly, the video to one, but obviously you would have had Cliff in the video instead of um, Jason. Um, so, and um, I, for, from what I, and I might have to, so don't quote me on this, but yeah, they lost that to Jeff Roy Tull. Um, at the Grammys, I think in 89, yeah, for the one video. Um, I can't remember the exact details. Um, I have a feeling they would have won. Um, just, um, that just coming to mind, but yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, so they would have um, done the, yeah, Damage, yeah, Justice, yeah, tour. And once again, um, Every song from the album would have been performed live in its entirety, yeah, at some point throughout the tour. Obviously, you'd have the songs that are performed more regularly, um, which might have been the same. Um, so the songs that were performed, what, pretty much um, every night were Blackened and Justice for All, One and Harvester of Sorrow. After Beholder was chucked in, not every night, but not as often as those songs, but often enough, you can there's you can see a number of performances where that song is performed live, so it would have been performed live, you know. But the other songs would have definitely been performed live, Shorter Straw, um, Freight Ends, To Live Us To Die, and Die's Eve. Um, and those songs would have been performed to their full potential. So, for example, Die's Eve, um, yeah, I guess most people, when they hear live performances now, they um, always comment on um, the, the, the lack of double bass, um, double kick drumming. Um, so you would have heard that song played pretty much with double kick yeah, drumming. Um, Cliff wasn't actually the leader of the band, but he did have that yeah, influence that um, he, he had some sort of influence where he just... Um, it just pushed the band to like um yeah push themselves raise the bar like there was just no um yeah mucking around with Cliff and the bands like everyone had to be on yeah top of their game yeah sort of thing um it's it's like he just had that without having to say too much he just had that um yeah he he just had that influence I guess over the band um so you would have heard all those songs performed live. Yeah, in their entirety and to their full potential. Um, and you would have seen, um, yeah, um, live video recordings of all those songs, um, professionally recorded, yeah, footage of all those songs. Because um, um, there's always that, you know. Um, I think, even anyway, there's always a lot of ass kicking. Back in those days, yeah, um, within the band, you know, to you know, bring out the best, you know, in each performer. So yeah, it would have been more so with Cliff though. So um, I think, um, especially James and Cliff, they had a such a tight sort of um, bond. Um, that even if hypothetically speaking, say Lars is unperformed, yeah, they would have. Pretty much, yeah, kicked his ass, you know, um, you know, um, into like lifting his game, you know. Um, but having said that, it was um, damn good back in those days. Um, I feel um, there would have been a number of things different, um, yeah, during that tour. Um, I can't imagine Cliff um, doing his um, anesthesia bass solo up. Yeah, by that point, um, would have probably started to get stale by that point. Um, he would have done a bass solo. I think he would have done some sort of take on Orion at that point, and you know, um, yeah, he just would have uh, meshed that into yeah some sort of completely different bass solo. Um, I think yeah, maybe even his fashions would have um, yeah, like kind of evolved a bit. I, I can't imagine him wearing flares right into the late 80s, but, you know, um, 
but having said that, um, yeah, Cliff was his own person. So, um, I feel, um, I guess one thing, um, uh, I guess, yeah, how shall I, yeah, a few, there were a few different, you know, um, a few liberties that were taken when he died, which I don't think would have been taken if he was alive. Um, ones for example is Lars um, ditching his ride symbol. Um, so you notice during the justice tour, yeah, he doesn't use it and the songs still sound fine, but um, the ones that use ride symbols, but they did sound better with the ride symbol parts in them. Um, and um, he pretty much only got rid of it in 88. Um, so he really would have kept it because um, I feel Cliff would have, um, you know, um, like, I guess, um, yeah, he, he would have felt like probably, you know, um, substituting it for a, like a hi-hat or a crash, it wouldn't work. Yeah, uh, would have sounded a, a bit lame and he would have gone, you know, what's going on here sort of thing. Um, you know, it's not working, especially with my, you know, doesn't work in well with my face and all that. So, you know, um, so um, I think those things, um, certain songs, um, yeah, liberties were taken with the way they were performed. Um, those sort of liberties wouldn't have happened. Take songs like um, Fate to Black, Creeping Death and Damage Incorporated. Um, they're the three songs that come to mind. Um, Damage Incorporated, for example, um, during the main riff, in the, um, that's used in the intro and uh, even during the guitar solo, it's got a, um, it's got a significant drum break during um, where Lars has a double kick and hits the Tom Toms and does some crazy stuff like that, which he stopped doing during the Justice era. And for some reason, I don't think, yeah, and he just played it straight, which um, I think those liberties would have been taken. Um, songs like Creepy Death and Fates of Black, um, I guess the choruses, there's, um, yeah, Halfway, yeah, um, through the choruses, yeah, there's um, certain um, weird sort of um, syncopated breaks um, done during that, which I think had Cliff been alive, those songs pretty much would have been performed the way they were performed during the Puppets era, Lightning and Puppets era. So, um, like, I don't think, like, whether they um, would have been performed at a... Um, faster tempo or not um that's i mean possibly yeah but it would would have still been performed as it should have been performed during those tours you, you can notice um the difference you know in how the songs are performed yeah um as the years go by so i think um those things um yeah cliff wouldn't have let um slide um so um I don't know if I explained that well, but um, if you listen to those songs performed live during the puppets, lightning and puppets era, and then um, listen listen to them performed in the justice era, it still sounds good, but yeah, there's certain things that um, where they started to change up the songs, which didn't do the um, didn't serve the song um, well. So um, sure, they might have tried those things out, but it would have gone nuts, not working. You know, let's just you know, go back to what we know sort of thing. Um, so, um, so yeah, so, um, yeah, so, so, um, so there were, those would have been the few differences during the justice. So I guess the same things would have been, um, yeah, the songs that they chose to play live of the um, previous albums, like, um, would have been the same. They would have continued to play, Four Horsemen, Whiplash, Seek and Destroy, um, From the Bell Tolls, Fates of Black, um, Creeping Death, um, from Puppets, yeah, the, I guess, um, I feel maybe Battery they wouldn't have played live because if they're playing Dire Z, um, they would have gotten, 
gotten rid of battery and just yeah put Dies Eve in there as a more regular sort of song. Uh, but the other songs, Puppets, Things That Should Not Be Sanitarium, um, and then to a lesser degree, Leopard Design, Damage Incorporated would have still been performed live, um, being the Damage Justice Tour. Um, cover songs would have been um, Am I Evil and Blitz Rig. Um, they, um, I'm not saying they wouldn't have done any other cover songs at that point, um, just not as many as they did. Um, I feel songs like Helpless, they still would have done, Perform Live. Um, who knows, they might have covered um, Black Sabbath song like um, NRB or Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. Um, I can actually see, um, yeah, a Cliff and Moore lineup, yeah, performing, yeah, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, but yeah. Um, because it, um, before they re um, recorded the Justice album, they did um, do a couple of cover songs just to get into the whole mode of recording, so they, they still would have gone down that path. Um, but yeah, they wouldn't have. Um, yeah, I guess songs they were most passionate about just you just got two to pick from and I feel yeah, maybe helpless. Um yeah, maybe we yeah, one of the other two I mentioned. Um but yeah. Um and then they would have performed yeah, those songs, yeah. You know, every so often live during the Justice Tour. Um So um yeah. So yeah, so, so um so they would have been, yeah, like gaining more, yeah, um, popularity um, as they did. Um, but with, yeah, Cliff and the band, um, they would have, um, yeah, finished the Injustice for All tour on a high, um, basically finishing the 80s on a high. Um, Cliff would have, um, um, yeah, he would have taught them to. The Southern Hemisphere, like New Zealand, and even down here to Australia for the first time. Um, so, um, so even down under, like here in Melbourne, where they came for the first time in 1989, you would have um, seen um, yeah, Cliff um, yeah, perform if you went to that concert. And, yeah, then, yep, yeah, it's Turner for, yeah. Yeah, like start of a new decade, 1990. Um, Metallica did a number of shows in London and the Netherlands in 1990. Um, so I feel they still would have gone ahead and done that. Um, I feel that part would have played out pretty similar to the way it did. Um, they wouldn't have, because um, that wasn't technically part of the Justice Tour, um, they would have, um, yeah, just picked a handful of songs off the Justice album and perform, yeah, um, yeah, that they would have, yeah, picked a handful of songs off the Justice album and, yeah, perform them live, but I think those tours are more, um, yeah, the, the, yeah, those, those tours are more, um, not to be taken overly seriously, um, just, um, some light shows, so who knows, maybe, at, at that point, they would have got to a stage where they had um, pretty much proven themselves, you know, um, beyond a shadow of a doubt, they would have left no stone unturned. So, sure, they still may have, um, yeah, performed, um, but they may have picked easier songs that would have just been more, you know, um, like... Um, I guess, um, yeah, just, um, yeah, chilling out, not, not so much chilling out, but, um, cause they were pretty tired by the end of the justice tour. Um, and there were songs that they never wanted to play live again after that tour, like the title track and justice for all, because it was too long. Um, so they would have, um, yeah, the over, you could um, tell they were pretty much over it at that point and, you know, definitely proved themselves. So, um, so now it's just, yeah, okay, let's, let's go do some live shows, but, you know, 
um, just pick a handful of songs. So who knows? They might have picked some of them. Um, yeah, just um, yeah. So yeah, some of the classics, you know, like Four Horsemen, Whiplash, Seek and Destroy. Um, yeah, from the Bell Tolls, Fates of Black, Creeping Death, maybe um, Master of Puppets. Um, yeah, the things that should not be. Um, yep, yeah, Sanitarium. Um, from Justice for All at that point, they may have yeah just performed songs like One, Harvester of Sorrow, maybe Shorter Straw. Um, yeah, maybe yeah. So I mean, those songs are intense, you know, to some degree, but they're not the most intense in their catalog, you know, at least not at that point. Um, they would have also performed maybe their the cover songs like Am I Evil, maybe Blue Tree, um, let's see, um, Helpless, whatever, um, yeah. And I guess, um, yeah, so, so it would have, yeah, um, so they just would be more light-hearted shows from, yeah, that point of view, not about, um, you know, um, so I guess, I guess, yeah, just to, um, yeah, not feel like they're, you know, um, that they're like doing, you know, performing like a whole bunch of exercises or doing a strict um, workout regime. It's just, yeah, more about just rocking out, yeah, really just more about rocking out, having fun sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, I feel that's how. Um, yeah, that's how the first half of 1990 would have played out. Um, they would have um, taken a, um, yeah, then by the end of that, they'd have come back home um, and then um, taken a break before, you know, starting to work on their next album, which at that point, um, they wouldn't have um, known what it is. Um, so um, that yeah, that would come into play um, yeah in yeah in good time. So that's basically what I'm going to cover um, yeah up to this point. Um, I covered it a bit into 1990, but I stopped at the point of the um, where, where they'd be starting to work on the Black Album because I feel. Um, the point I stopped at, it was still the justice here and they, um, it was a different decade. Um, it was, um, yeah, I mean, you pretty much got the hangover from the eighties, so to speak. So there, um, so the justice era pretty much, it didn't really, um, finish on the 31st of December, 89, so to speak. It was, you know, did linger on a bit into 1990. So, um, I feel, yeah, that had to be addressed. Um, so, yeah, so, um, so the nineties with Metallica, um, that would be, um, yeah, like that would take a completely different turn. Notice the eighties, yeah, it didn't take, um, too much of a, um, yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't too different, at least from my, um, the way I look at things. Um, Metallica would have definitely been in a different headspace at that point. Um, like, on the current timeline, when it got to 1990, I mean, um, at the, that point, it had been, you know, well over three and a half years since Cliff was killed. So even though they still had a lot of anger in them, it was starting, you know, I guess in their case, more like maybe either suppressing it a bit more or maybe coming more to terms with it um, or at least not handling it the same way they did in 86 and 87. Um, so you could tell time was passing, um, you know, and even though they would have been thinking about it, you know, but, um, but at the same time, um, I guess, um, yeah, moving, yeah, moving forward, so to speak. 
So, um, but that would have been a different, completely headspace had, yeah, Cliff still been alive. Um, but, and yeah, they would have still been on top of their game. Um, and as, as I said, um, yeah, I mean, um, pretty much at the best point they could, um, be at, but you'd notice, um, yeah, history will yeah will take an interesting turn in the nineties with yeah, um, yeah Cliff and the band. Um, so as I said, I'm not going to cover that today. I've already gone yeah you know, over forty minutes, so I didn't think it'll take that long. But um, if this is completely unscripted, so that could be part of the reason why. Um, and as I said, this is I mean we won't know for sure. Um, I'm giving a hypothetical, you know, this is from my point of view, this is what stands to reason for me. Um, I'm sure there'd be a lot of people that would disagree with me, but um, this, is where I'm, um, this is where I stand, I stand strong on this. Um, so, yeah, this is yeah, pretty much Metallica into May or June of 1990, with Cliff still alive, you know. Um, feel free to give um, your take on it. Um, if there's anything you disagree with, with what I've said, um, um, yeah, feel free to let me know in the comments, um, and I'll be happy to respond. Um, and for now, um, my name is Russell. I'm signing off, and yep, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Um, yep. Stay tuned for more what ifs, hypotheticals. And if there's any questions you feel um, you'd like to get my perspective on, feel free to drop them in the comments. Okay, signing out. Catch you later.